Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be taking a close look at the little old game you may have heard of, but maybe never played, called Smite. Big thanks to Hi Res for sponsoring this video, and we're just going to look at the sort of the basics, you know, breaking into it. It's mainly for people who haven't played the game before and are wondering <laughs> just what is it all about. If you're a veteran of the series, you might just be embarrassed by the way that I play. The game comes in two different forms. At the moment, it is available as the Founders Pack Edition, and that is the sort of the paid edition where you get access to every single playable god. We'll get onto that in a minute. Just straight from the offset, so you don't have to worry about unlocking them or, you know, sort of taking any time. You can just dive right in, play whichever god you want to, and it's frankly marvellous. It also comes with some additional things, which I've forgotten, but will now put on the screen. The alternative is to simply wait until a later date where the game will go free to play. Meaning you'll be able to just play the game for free. It does mean that you won't have access to every god from the outset, but you know, you can play it for free later on if you like. However, if you want to dive right in and get ahead of the game, then you can do so by purchasing the Founders Pack. Ha! <laughs> but Alex, I hear you cry. That's all well and good, but what, what even is the game? Well, I'm going to show you, and in order to do that, I'm going to need a pair of headphones because I'm going to do it as I play, because that's an easy way to edit the video. But anyway, that is more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Okay, so as you can see here, we are on the main menu. That, now, that, that character in the middle, that's not my character. You don't have to worry about that. But uh, basically, the idea of the game is it is a uh, essentially a MOBA, a multiplayer online battle arena. And Lordy Lou, I just want to really quickly show you just how many gods there are to play as. So as you can see, um, there's nine pages of gods here, and I happen to know that in the future, they will be announcing their 100th god, because right now there are 99, the 99th being currently King Arthur. But let's talk about the gameplay. So we're going to be focusing on one of the game modes in this video, and that is the one that you will be playing when you first start up the game, called Arena. And uh, in order to give you a, a better understanding... Oh, look! Ro <laughs> Rogue24 is has a game ready. Let's not join it. So I'm just going to create a match uh, with bots just so that I can take you through the sort of the step-by-step -step everything. I'm just going to load a load of bots in. This is a custom game, which you uh, obviously can do if you like. There is also, of course, matchmaking, and most importantly, there is crossplay. Coming soon. So let's start the match and dive right into things. So I'm going to choose my uh, character now. I'm going to go with a, a, tried and, a tried and tested character of mine, which is Ra, just because I've always liked the sun god Ra, and I'm hoping that by playing as him, maybe I'll unlock some of the business secrets of the pharaohs. So as you can see, the game is going to be a 5v5, which is standard, and you can see just the variety that we've got here, just straight from the start. We've got Ra, Arachna, uh, we've got Neith, we've got Anubis, Bacchus, the god of wine, I know that one. We've got Fenrir, we've got Chanjay, I've probably butchered that. We've got Guan Yu, again, butchering all the time, Medusa, and Ares, and that is just that is just a slice of the characters there are in this game. The amount of gods is a little bit fantastic. So this is the arena. Now, what you can do is the game, as you can see at the top, it says game starts in, and there's 30-odd seconds up there. But we can still leave, we can do what we like. The bots won't, because the bots are probably quite sensible, but, uh, you know... I can take you through a couple of bits and bobs here. So first of all, as you can see down here uh, on the right hand side of the screen, you've got 500 in red and 500 in blue. 500 in blue is ours. Now those are tickets. Now tickets essentially are kind of like, mm, kind of like anti-points, if you like. Or well, actually no, they are more like points. You don't want to lose them. And basically uh, the whole game revolves around these points. You want the enemy to lose 500 points, and for you, not to. <laughs> ideally, ideally not lose any, but th th that's just not going to happen. And the way that you, uh, the way that you lose points or force the enemy to lose points, is myriad. You can, uh, as you can see here, there are these little minions here, which I'm killing. Killing a minion takes off a ticket, and uh, if you can get your minions here into that portal at the end, which is the enemy's portal, which we're about to do. That also takes off an enemy ticket. Marvellous. It's as simple as that. And that is where a bulk of the game is. 
Now, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a step back uh, quickly. Oh dear, Bacchus is about to die. He looks like he needs a wee. So as you can see, obviously there are the five other gods that we are fighting against. Now we do want to fight these gods, but that really is not the primary objective. Think of it a little bit like Splatoon, where you can attack and uh, you can splat other enemies, and that's important, but it is not the main objective of the game. The main objective is to get these tickets for away from the enemy and to prevent your tickets from being taken away. Really simple stuff, so you don't necessarily have to be playing really aggressively. You can play support, you can uh, run alongside, you can escort all of your minions so that they get to the other side, and you'll be doing a really, really good job as a result. So you don't have to be extremely aggressive in order to be really effective in this game. But as you can see, Ares is nearly, is nearly snuffed out there. Let's see if I can get him with... Maybe? No, I don't have the range. He ran out of the way, and now... I've put myself in a very silly situation. <laughs> you no doubt saw that I was using a couple of special abilities there. For example, Ra, as we can see here, has, uh, well, every character has four special abilities and some of them, in fact, most of them, I believe, even have some passive ones. But that's one of them there. It's a really strong attack and uh, it's slow, relatively easy to dodge, but, you know, it's a good, strong offensive move. And as you can see, I'm taking out minions like no tomorrow right there preventing the opponent from getting tickets and making sure that their minions don't get through. Because I was talking too much, I wasn't looking at my health, which is something you should really do. The other two abilities, the ones on B and A that you can see, we'll get onto X in just a moment. Do other things, for example, this inflicts a slow on the opponents that it hits, and it can also damage them as well. And then you've got this move on A, which heals you, which is most useful. And I'm just making sure that we don't get these. And then I've got my ultimate, which is kind of, in a way, slightly like a really souped up version of my uh, of my Y attack, this one here. But it is it's slow to aim, there's a bit of a charge up, and it's difficult to get a decent hit on. It's very difficult to aim. So, you know, it's all swings and roundabouts. It balances out. I've been talking about Ra a lot, but... Uh, I thought it was important you knew what I was doing. Every single god has got a different ability, well, many different abilities, and the way that you play them will change dramatically. For example, Ra is a mage, and so you sort of want to try and keep your distance a bit. Not got a huge amount of health, a decent amount, but can deal a lot of damage, kind of like a glass cannon, if you like. So I'm, I, you re may have seen that I, uh, I retreated then, that's because I was low on health, and if you go back into your base, you can get your health and mana back. And never be afraid to retreat if that seems to be the best thing to do. If there's a lot of enemies about or they're really hitting you hard, do not be afraid to pop back for a little bit. Damn, I missed them. Don't be afraid to pop back and get your health and mana back. Seriously, it's so important. It's much more important that you survive, even if you're out of the game for a bit, like I'm doing here. I don't really need to retreat, but I just want to illustrate. Because if you destroy an enemy opponent, as in one of the gods, the actual playable characters, not the minions, oh, that would be too easy. They lose five tickets, and the same goes the other way around. If you die your team loses five tickets. So it's much better to retreat and live to fight another day than it is to try and go in for bravado or try and get try and get that kill that you really want. For example, this, that was quite uh, that was quite risky because there are people behind me now, but thankfully they were a good distance away, which I could tell from looking at the minimap, as you can see there, which I'll zoom in on a bit. Marvellous. So as you can see, we're actually losing at the moment, which is not ideal, as you can probably understand. But we can turn things around, it's not that close. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to escort these minions here to make sure they get to the... the enemy portal safely. Now I'm going to quickly retreat again, although I'm going to try and heal Bacchus just to make sure he's got a little bit of health buffer before he gets back to the... the base. Not terribly necessary in that instance, but if you can, heal your opponents at every opportunity if they look like they're in a sticky situation. Now, you may see that on the left there, I've got an orf, I've got, I've got like a boot, I've got a staff, and I've got a shield. Now, what are those things? Well, by pressing left on the D-pad whilst you're in the uh, base, you can go into the shop. 
and you can buy lots of different things that will give you perks and improve your abilities and your attack and your strength and your health and all those sort of things. Really important buffs. It's really important that you use these to their full advantage. However, if you're just starting out, you might want to do what I'm doing and just have auto purchase on, which I'll now show you how to do with a cutaway. You press X on this screen and you got auto skills on and auto purchase on. Basically, what this means is that when you're in your base, the computer, the game will just purchase things for you, whatever it thinks is best. And the same goes with your abilities. You can choose to manually unlock and upgrade them, or you can just choose to let the system do it for you. To begin with, I would definitely recommend just sticking to auto. It's one less thing to have to worry about. However, once you're more familiar with the game, I would definitely recommend going with manual because then you can tweak your character to be just as you want them and to be even more potent, which is really important. But as I say, to begin with, keep it simple and don't worry yourself too much about it. There is another thing that you'll want to pay attention to as well, uh, which is going to be these creatures over here, which you can see now. If you just go around here, they're, they're not going to pay you any mind. They won't attack you, so you don't have to worry about that. However, oh dear. We're not doing brilliantly. I, I need to support my team. <laughs> so anyway, back to the creatures that you can see here. These creatures will give you bonuses if you slap them about a bit. For example, as you can see here, it says up there, Mana Camp. And you need to be quite close to them in order to deal them damage. Otherwise, it could be really easily abused. And so as you can see now, I've got a buff that improves my mana, which means that I can use more abilities more recklessly. And oh lordy, do I like using them recklessly. What you may see at the start of a game before the uh, the match has properly started and the minions spawn is people rushing over to these things in order to get their perks as soon as possible. Very important. There is one more key element to gameplay and that is relics, which you can see in the bottom left hand corner there. Now, by holding ZL and pressing Y or B, for example, I press Y there, I have activated my relic. Now, relics come in all different shapes and sizes, and they essentially think of them like universal abilities that anyone can use and don't require mana, but do have a big cooldown, as you can see there, over 100 seconds for this one. Uh, for example, if I press Z, L, and B, that will grant me some immunities to taking damage for a, only a few seconds. But if you're caught in the heat of battle, and I believe it also sort of breaks you out of crowd control things, so if somebody's trying to pin you, you can break out of it, which can be extremely useful. And it's just a few seconds, but that can be enough to really turn the tide of a battle. So to recap, what you want to do is the primary goal is not to do with the enemy gods. It is to do with the minions. Make sure your minions get to the enemy portal unharmed and make sure that the enemy minions don't get to your portal at all because that would be bad and as you can see the minions will fight each other there and so by killing them the minions are free to carry on and hop into that portal like the bunch of ah -ha 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 -ha. that's a siege minion that is worth 15 tickets if you can get them to the enemy portal which we've just done and we've managed to get 15 tickets which is absolutely excellent so they are really high priority targets if it's yours make sure it gets there alive if it's the enemies make sure you knock it seven shades to nowhere when you first start up the game there will be a tutorial that uh, will try and tell you how to play the game i would highly recommend doing that tutorial oh that was spicy i would highly recommend uh going through and playing that tutorial simply because ah, I've got to get out of here simply because even though you've watched this and I've told you quite a lot of the same sort of thing maybe in a different way perhaps to what the tutorial will it's totally different to actually living it and playing it so make sure you play the tutorial that will give you a, an even more solid understanding okay do that for me would you I'm now gonna see if I can win this game which it's looking like we will which would be nice Hey, there we go. We won. Lovely stuff. And you can even see me, Mr. Old Ra down there with Neath dancing behind me, because why not? So my top tips for playing Smite to make sure you're playing it like Smite and not just like another game is number one, focus on minions. Minions are your priority. Minions will win games 
Killing gods will not. Number two, do not be afraid to retreat when it makes sense. If you look like you're gonna get knackered or it's just a load of enemies coming your way, maybe pop a couple of shots at them, but then make sure you get the hell out of there because otherwise they could uh, make, a, make a dog's dinner out of you and that's not a good. And number three, make sure you work as a team. If you see teammates in a hard situation, support them, fire something at them, hell, you know, sort of give them some health, you know, just do something to make sure that they survive. It's a team game, work as a team. Once again, big thanks to Hi res for sponsoring this video and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you shout huzzah whilst you're holding a big staff of, made of that subscribe button. And be sure to check out nintendolive.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,